we have an array of options here. You can see all the different wealth symbols that are presented to you that you can and you have the ability to use and this is how you build uh, your weld uh, information so that whenever you go to place it inside the draft it's easy to, to place that outside there. So I just want to go to fill it and click on save and hit OK. Now through this process we're going ahead and pin this and through this process it's going to ask us well what do we want uh, to to weld together. Well, we'll just go ahead and select uh, this information. So I just want to select these parts. Will that quick pick help me with this particular face sets? Quick pick is a great tool. So if you have a multiple of items there in your list, you can easily go out and and select this information very quickly. So that's the information I want. Go ahead and select that and we'll just go ahead and weld it to that plate that top plate preview it and we have a nice weld right inside of there now in this particular case we see that uh, I have some weld and it's a lot of weld bead going around maybe I wanted to perform a, a stitch weld well you know it may be new to solid edge and if you're new to solid edge well you, you may not know where the the stitch you know weld feature is but we have a command finder and we can simply just type in the command that we want to find and solid edge comes up and shows it to me whenever I place my cursor over it it shows it directly into my my UI and I can go ahead and I can select it and it takes me directly into that command in this case here maybe I want to have a gap width choose what my gap width is if I want to have a stitch or a stitch with offsets or just simply offsets you have the, an array of, of choices that you uh, want to be able to choose from and here we'll just go ahead and select the information uh, that we want to go through and select that as our stitch and you can see very quickly in a, in a matter of seconds we've gone in and we've added uh, the stitch weld on the outside and you can do the same thing uh, for the inside as well to show you a little bit more uh, we can go in and add a fillet weld and again I can just turn, simply turn this off uh, if I so choose if I want to add this information again save that as my default <laughs> and then go out here and say well I want to go ahead and I want to select this member and we'll go ahead and we'll select this member here and we'll go ahead and choose uh, these items over here again quick pick is going to help me choose the information that I need very quickly and those are the members that I always want to go in and weld and you can see that we've added those fillet welds very nicely inside of there so that's just a real quick uh, overview of adding welding functionality inside of a uh, solid edge so let's go in and let's uh, move on and let's take a look at uh, some other tools that we have called system libraries and now that we um, have our frame uh, selected inside of there we want to go in and we want to turn on a few things one is that main uh, body uh, that we want to be able to choose from because what we want to do is we want to bring in uh, some fixtures that we have and that we commonly use and one of those fixtures is a it's called small two pad clamp and we simply just drag and drop this inside of here and you're going to be presented with a an options box and because of that this is a family of assemblies and we're giving you the options of of which ones these are and you can see that we have different heights inside of here 24 inches 26 30 or we also have a a thing that's very unique to solid edge and solid edge only is called dynamic configuration this is building configurations of assemblies on the fly and so what it does is it looks at the parts that are inside of there and so I want to take this part which is actually a family of parts and I want to have uh, the height of it as being 26 and you can see that it already shows that I have two other configurations of that but I want to add some different uh, sub assemblies inside of here and you'll see that solid edge is telling me uh, you don't have any configurations for that so uh, what should I do? Should I create a brand new assembly based off this or should I create a new member? <coughs> so we'll just name this new member uh, 2pad 26.4 because it's going to be 26 inches high and 4 inches in diameter and what it's doing is it's going to create this 
uh, new configuration on the fly but also save it to the assembly file and once Solid Edge has gone through that process we can easily just go through and now uh, add our mating uh, conditions to here but flash fidget is going to help us uh, do this very quickly just be able to click on where we want to go and then we will just want to add the pad to that other part but notice that it created a flush relationship that's the intelligence that's going on behind the scenes where Solid Edge is understanding what this is but if that's not the relationship you want you can just simply go over to their uh, to the right to the command bar and hit flip and then you can just zoom in on a particular area and now we want to align up our bolt uh, with our bolt hole and you can see that the assembly now is no longer translucent but now solid that gives you a visual indication that everything is uh, in its correct location. Next what we want to be able to do is we want to know what the distance is between this edge and this edge of this part and rather than go through and inspect or uh, go through that process what we want to be able to utilize is tools that are inside of solid edge called sensors and we're just going to take a minimum distance sensor to say I want you to monitor that edge with this other edge of this part and we and we know that that's 7.625 and so we can save that now as maybe distance um, to edge and we're just going to give it an, uh, an operation of not between so I want this to always look at uh, if this value does not fall between 6 and 8 if it does not then give me a warning and you can see here that we have uh, the red is showing us where the bad indicators are and right now we're in, we're in the gray so we're, we're good to go and so what we want to do now is show that even though I've brought this in and I've added some assembly relationships, Solid Edge has the ability to capture that information and save it to that file. And by doing that, the benefit is to you is that whenever you bring on someone new, a uh, new person into your organization, they're able to understand how your assemblies need to go together and how they need to be placed. So now what we want to do is we want to utilize what we just placed inside of there but also place it in here but notice that in this particular case there are uh, no mounting holes. Well that's because we're able to inside of Solid Edge not only able to capture fit what the mating relationships are but we're also able to capture fit uh, what mounting uh, features that need to be placed at the same time with your assemblies and that's what we call system libraries and what system libraries does is it provides you with a wizard uh, type interface to help the user uh, through the process of how you know it's being placed together and this is where this capture fit uh, comes into play so here it's showing that I need to have a mate highlights the face that it needs to be mated to so I simply just click on that face we automatically made it mate that one to there and now I need to um, have a distance but notice that whenever you reuse something it may not always go into the exact same location as it did before and as we measured before it was 7.625 but here you can see that the distance is di different than that and that's okay because Solid Edge gives you the ability to type in that value uh, that you want and because of that whenever I go and place this select the face that I want it now puts it with that particular value and then next it needs to know which part do we want to place these features onto and so we'll just go and grab the part that we want place those on there and then now it goes into that part level and then places those features so if you look underneath now we have uh, not only the the bolts in there but we also have the holes placed inside of our plate now so we're able to place these assemblies uh, along with their uh, features mounting features that need to go along with it next we had we actually designed a uh, a configuration on the fly on the other side and we wanted to be able to use that same exact one so that is a part of a family so all we have to do is simply right mouse click replace and notice what comes up the very first member is the dynamic configuration that I created so as you see as you create these dynamic configurations they're created on the fly and easily placed inside of our assembly
and you can see now we have the larger pad being placed inside of there so you can see how system library enables you to reuse data uh, that you have from different assemblies reuse them place them in there uh, as they always need to go in there in the same way and also place their mounting features at the same time and be able to do that very quickly now next what we want to be able to show you is you've seen how we've, we've placed assemblies inside of here uh, that already have uh, bolts that are, that are in there, but how how did we get those in there? Well, in Solid Edge, we have uh, what we call fastener systems, and in doing that, I'll show you some other tools that we have. Notice how you have some view orientation tools that actually, as you mouse over them, they put you into those view orientations. Well, you're actually able to save. Uh, some of these orientations and name them and have the system go directly to that particular location. And so here what I want to be able to do is put in a fastener system because we have two plates here that we need to bolt together. So this is the step process just like in, in everything else that we do inside of Solid Edge. You just pick the entity, accept it, and then what is the through hole? And then it will go out and it will query the database based on those holes that you selected, the size that you selected, and then the length that it selected as well. And depending upon the database that you have selected, you can have uh, your own custom database. Uh, you can use the one that already comes with Solid Edge. You can see here we have an array of uh, different parts that we want to be able to use. But in this particular case, I just want to use that particular type of bolt. Uh, I want to use a particular washer, uh, but in this case, I want to make sure that the bolt uh, goes to a certain length because that's that's what we currently have out in the shop is this particular length. So you can choose that. You don't have to use a certain length, but if you have one that you have in stock, you can simply select that length and have it as a user-defined length and place that inside of there very very nicely. So as you can see, we have our bolted connection. Uh, it is. Uh, the bolt went all the way through which is what we wanted it to do and that's the one that we're using out on the shop floor another case inside of here as well it helps with your large assemblies is the ability to use what we call simplified uh, parts so if I look at this fastener system uh, if we go inside of here you will see uh, there's an icon here uh, that shows that that is a simplified part and so you can easily go through and you can have simplified or you can actually use designed parts and you see that it has a rounded edge or non-rounded edge just add some uh, simplification uh, to that particular one so as we leave now uh, this assembly we want to take you on to and show you the uh, the drafting portion uh, of our uh, presentation and how you can uh, utilize uh, the tools that are inside of the draft file so one of the things that we're going to highlight for you is the ability to create uh, your draft sheets very very fast and in doing that we're going to use what we call a quick sheet template a quick sheet template is the ability to uh, take one of your existing uh, draft files and that is predefined views bill of materials section views um, detail views all that is already predefined uh, on your drawing and all that you have to do then is just take a particular assembly or or part file doesn't matter and simply drag and drop it in in this case we're taking a a lower section assembly and as you see on the screen there it's it's a complete assembly but based on how we defined our view we defined our view based on a particular configuration and as you see just that one configuration came in and this is how you can customize your draft files to uh, quickly create those draft views uh, get a bill of materials and your balloons out on on your draft sheets along with filling in your uh, title block at the same time so let's go ahead and I want to save this and whenever I save it you'll notice down here at the bottom that it's the date and also the author in which it was saved so that information can also be captured but one of the things I want to draw your attention to is uh, notice that this is a frame and we have uh, particular cut lengths and as you can see we have one bill of materials that has given me the cut length for each individual member and then down here at the bottom draw your attention to the red one is that is the total length of material used now in this 
particular case uh, we've used just one style. If you have many different styles it will have those total lengths for each one of those members. And if you don't like the way Solid Edge um, numbers